my YouTube friends. There's a wave of sentiment around OBS that I've seen a lot lately. People are looking for alternatives because they just can't seem to get OBS working reliably. Now I have my OBS all loaded up and I push it really hard. And I never really have any of these issues. In fact, I can't remember the last time it crashed. However, I was a PC tech for most of my life. So when I do run into issues, I know how to resolve them. Not everyone has the luxury of years of troubleshooting experience. So today I'm going to give you that wisdom. I'm going to share with you the five secrets of how to troubleshoot crashes in OBS and fix them. All of them. It's not as difficult as you think. So you know what? Let's get to it. The easiest place to start is with the log files. Now I know that reading log files is pretty much impossible, even for experienced techs. Techs are generally not programmers and programmers are not techs. So these files weren't really written for us. Luckily, the programmers at OBS gave us some tools to help us read them. Let me show you. To get to our log files, what we're gonna do is go up here into help and we're going to go to log files. And we're gonna use their cool little tool here by going to upload current log, or you could do a previous log and you can see that log comes up here and we're just gonna to go to analyze. And this brings up a really cool web page. So it has here the file that we uploaded and we can analyze it again here or analyze a different file if we want. But here we've got some critical issues. We have two instances of OBS running. We have a hardware accelerated GPU problem, and we have an audio monitoring device problem. And if you go down here, it tells you specifically about this. Now we have two instances of OBS running, and that's so I can show you how to do this stuff. We have a hardware accelerated GPU schedule, and you'll notice this really does give you some detailed information. So if we go and we click here, we can open settings, and we can actually turn this off. It's right in advanced graphics. We could turn it off. We have to reboot the PC in order to have it completely shut off but once we do that will be shut off and then it tells us we've got a problem with our audio monitoring device and then we could just go into settings and take a look at our monitoring device right here and you can see it's grayed out so it's just not finding it and it's probably because I don't have it turned on we could do that click apply and that would solve that problem then we've got down here, warning non-standard frame rate. And that is because I record in 24 frames per second. I don't use the standard frame rate. So I get that one. Then we've got our Windows uh, stuff up here. So all this stuff is just info. No output session. So I don't have an output session set up or something like that. And I have 22 third-party plugins. And here is where you can really get some information. This is what plugins I have installed. So I've got JR Docky and a whole bunch of other ones. And so I would definitely start troubleshooting, especially crashes, by going through this list of plugins and finding any plugins that you don't recognize or that you don't use and removing them. That will solve a busload of problems. Now those plugins may not be causing any problems, but nine times out of 10, if your OBS is crashing, it's a plugin. So how do you remove these? Well, what you do is you go into the directory for OBS. So wherever you have it stored, yours is probably gonna be in C program files, OBS-Studio. I have mine in its own directory over here. So we just have to look for OBS-Studio right there. And the second that we click on the main folder, we can see that we have all of this information right here. All of these right here are installed plugins. Now we don't know what plugins they are. That makes life a little difficult. Some of them have little icons and maybe those icons are recognizable to you. Maybe they're not. But all you have to do is click on the executable for any one of these plugins and it will tell you, are you sure you want to completely remove source record? So that's the name of the plugin. And if you don't want it, you click yes. So you just got to click on these executables to find the plugins that you don't want and remove them. And a lot of times that's going to take care of a bunch of problems. So this is the OBS log analyzer. It's pretty awesome. It's a very, very helpful tool. Next, let's look at some tools OBS has given us that we can use to figure out what's going wrong in OBS. The first one is the stats window. To get to the stats window, what we're gonna do is go up here into view, 
and then we're gonna go to stats. And this brings up the stats for whatever we're doing in our OBS. So we've got our CPU usage, disk space available, our memory usage, frames per second, our average time to render, and then we've got the most important stuff. Frames missed due to render lag, frames missed due to encoding lag, and drop frames because of the network. So these three things are gonna help us to analyze what might be going wrong with our stream. If we are missing frames due to rendering lag or encoding lag, generally speaking, that has something to do with how the machine is processing the actual stream. So is it struggling to encode or something like that? CPU or GPU problems. And I'll show you how to troubleshoot what that is. And then of course, frames drop due to network lag is pretty straightforward. If you're dropping frames on the network, it's because you're trying to push too much information and you don't have the bandwidth to do it. Maybe you're supposed to have the bandwidth, but right now your internet is not giving it to you. So the stats window is a great place to start when we want to take a look at what our streams are doing. We could dock it right there and then when we change scenes, we can get a look at what it does. Does our CPU usage go up? Are we dropping frames per second or anything like that? and nothing is happening, everything is good to go. So now we have our stats window open, let's open some Windows tools to help us as well. The Windows Task Manager can be super helpful to see if we're overloading anything at all. So to get to Task Manager, we're just gonna right click and go to Task Manager, brings it up, and we have important stuff up here at the top, CPU, memory, network, disk, and I like to have my GPU up here, so we're gonna right click and we're gonna go and select GPU. And now it shows the percentage of usage for each of these items. You can see we're using a lot of GPU. Here it tells us what's actually using that. So I've got two instances of OBS open. We can see this instance is using a lot of GPU. That would be because this instance is recording our screen. So you can see how this can easily help you to troubleshoot what's causing problems. And you're gonna be looking at these four things, your CPU, your GPU, your memory, and your network. When we're broadcasting, our network is gonna be utilized more, and your memory is gonna be used based on how big your stream is. Is it taking up too much memory? Do you have too many other programs over here that are taking up memory? What are they doing? What percentage are they using? That sort of stuff is pretty important. Your CPU and your GPU is gonna vary depending upon how you have your stream set up. So if you are encoding on a CPU using X264, then your CPU is gonna be high, probably really high. And if you are encoding on your GPU, that's why we've got this at 50% because our GPU, our NVIDIA graphics card is doing the encoding right now. If these are close to 100%, especially if you're dropping frames in your stats window, if your GPU or your CPU are too high and you're dropping frames, that's pretty good dead giveaway that you're gonna need to modify your stream in settings and in your output. So your bit rate or something like that will have to be adjusted in order to compensate for the 100% you're getting in your CPU or GPU. Now, like I said, I'm running high on the GPU because I'm using an NVIDIA NVIC card, but if you're running your streams with X264, that's gonna run high on your CPU. And if your CPU gets close to 100%, there's a lot of other things on your computer that will start to fail too, because of course your computer is running based on your CPU. That's why it's nice to have a GPU that runs your stream and all of your encoding. Because you don't have to worry about your computer going haywire, I'm really not using much of my computer at all. So that's just the simple basics of troubleshooting when you use your task manager. And you're gonna use your task manager in conjunction with your stats screen. So you're gonna have these up and you're gonna be streaming and you're gonna be able to tell what is overloaded, what's causing problems, and what's going wrong. With all of the most important things, being your render lag, your encoding lag, and your network. So now we have to push the system while streaming or recording and watch our stats and task manager to see what's happening during our broadcast. This is absolutely easy if you're recording or you're streaming to YouTube. We can stream to YouTube unlisted. But what about Twitch? There is no unlisted, so a lot of people just go live and test. But you don't have to do that you can use another tool OBS has added. All right, so all we have to do is go into settings and go into stream. 
And if you have your stuff connected directly with Twitch, you're gonna see something down here that says enable bandwidth test mode. And you can just click on that and click apply. And now when you start streaming, it's going to automatically go to test mode and you're gonna get an error message that's telling you it's automatically going to test mode. But now you can test on Twitch to see how everything works and know that you're not going to broadcast out to everybody. So it's pretty cool. So now we're connected in streaming and we can go in here and we can bring up our stats window and we can see everything that's going on while we're live. So we're not dropping any frames on our network. We're not missing anything on render lag or encoding. We can see that our GPU hasn't spiked, our memory hasn't gone up, and we are only using 1% of our network based on how we're streaming the Twitch. So we're in good shape, but it's going to be easy for you to troubleshoot what's going on because you can see everything. You can see if you're dropping frames or lagging. You can see if you've got any memory CPU, GPU, or network problems. Really, really easy. So you ended up with high CPU or GPU usage, or maybe too much memory is being used in testing. OBS included another awesome tool that can help you see what your scene is doing, even when it's not the active scene. You see, a lot of resources can be used up in the background on scenes that aren't even being displayed. Let me show you what I mean. So all we have to do with this tool is go up to view and we're gonna go to the multi-view windowed. And this shows all of our different scenes. So we see our main scene that's shown right here and right here and we have our other scene that's shown right here. And I have it set up so that the video that's in the background is not playing when we can't see that scene. I can double click right here and I can see it, it will start to play. Now, if I have the settings incorrect in here, then that means that it could just play. So I've got restart playback when source becomes active, which means it automatically restarts the video when it becomes active. We'd have to uncheck that. You can see that it is running in the background and that's definitely not what we want. The reason why it's running in the background is because of that box we just unchecked. So we'll go in here and make sure that you have this check and you won't have this sort of stuff running in the background so that it's taking up all kinds of clock cycles that we don't want. It will automatically come on. But the best way to check for this is using this multi-view. Pretty simple tool to bring up and use, but really helpful to see what might be running in your other scenes that you don't actually know about. And all that stuff, every little bit counts. All right, so we've gone through all this and we're still getting crashes in OBS. We are the ultimate failures and we need to hang our heads in shame. We're gonna need to change all of our social media profiles to read failure in life and sell all of our devices and move into the van down by the river. Van down by the river! And give up completely. Or we could just do what all techs do and ask someone who knows more than we do. Luckily, OBS has made it super easy to do with another awesome tool. Now OBS has made this really easy as well. We can go into tools, we can go into help, and then we can go to our log files or crash reports because crash reports are what we're looking for. If we click show crash reports, it's gonna bring up the folder where all your crash reports are. Now you can double click on these and see if you can figure out why it crashed if you really want to. But like I said, these are made by programmers and not by techs. So they're pretty tough to read. Now sometimes you might get lucky and you might find something that didn't load that you can easily track down as a plugin or something like that. But generally speaking, these crash logs are just as confusing and useless to me as they would be to you, which is why they gave us another tool. If we go into help and we go to our crash reports, we can upload a previous crash report and we get this right here. And so all we have to do is copy the URL, right? And then we just go over to the OBS forums. And the o OBS forums has Windows, Mac, Linux support. You just select which one it is and you go ahead and create 
create an account if you don't have one already. It's really not that big a deal. They're not asking for your firstborn son and you don't have to give them your social security number. Create an account if you need to and then just go ahead and post in here and put the link to your log file. You tell them what the problem is. OBS is crashing. Here's my log file. Can you help me out? Within moments, somebody is going to go ahead and help you out. Now you can also go into help up here and you can go to their official discord or you can get to their discord right here and you could post it there as well so there are a lot of different places that you can get help including reddit if you want to post your crash log there but someone will get back to you and if they know what's causing the problem you're going to be able to fix it and no more crashes in obs there is help out there if you can't figure it out on your own now i hope this video really helps to alleviate that impression that OBS doesn't run right. The truth is it's stable and it works very well when it's set up properly. And it's the best live streaming and recording option out there for free. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? Let me know about it down in the comments. And if you want to see a video on how to fix all of our audio sync and video sync issues in OBS, check this one out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.